set the uh, timer here. I've always prepared far, far too much. And some of it is very technical, some of it is very general. So, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll we <laughs> So there are some 240 plays contained in the total, in the current repertoire of the five schools of Noah. And this is called in Japanese, Genko Yokyoko, the ones that are actually performed, the ones that we can see, and the ones that are most uh, studied here. And uh, since this is a conference on contemporary tradition, Japanese performance uh, genre today, I thought I'd start with a few general words about this uh, contemporary scene, about what plays are performed most often, and in particular, the place of Shuramono, uh, the warrior place, just 16 in this canon of 240. Um, and then I'll move to the admittedly rather esoteric topic of plays that are no longer in the current repertoire, which in Japanese we call Banga Yokyo. They're no longer performed, they're little red, and they're thousands of them. There's lots for me to read. Um, so, let's move, move on. So what, what do I do? Just click it here. So the question is, uh, we often hear, and I'd like to have a quick poll here, how many Japanese scholars, people have said to you, uh, yes, they're 240 or 250, but of those, not many. There's only 70 performed. What number have you heard? Anybody? I have often hear 150 grai. What number have you heard? 50 to 75. 50 to 75, okay. Well, I decided that I shouldn't just quote that here. I actually looked at my favorite website in Japan these days. Is this wonderful website to find out what's on where. And if you look at this website for the month of October this year, uh, how many do you think were performed? I'm not going to teach this as a class. I'll just go on. There's not enough time for that here. There were 182 fully staged performances. In other words, not dances from a particular <coughs> no, but a no that was done from beginning to end with, uh, with musicians. Uh, and of course, many plays were performed twice. So that's 89 different no plays. So actually more than you said. And of course, you know, in, if, if you look in September and, uh, and uh, November, you find uh, other plays that are performed. So it's actually, they perform a lot. And uh, just for purposes of comparison, I checked Shakespeare's plays being performed somewhere in the UK in the month of October, 18 out of Shakespeare's 38 plays. Quite a lot, I thought, but you know, I think Japan is doing pretty well in this pretty... Now remember, these are performed just once, uh, often, just one performance of a particular group at a particular time. Uh, but that's quite a lot, isn't it? So uh, there's a nice little software called Tag Cloud where you can put by the number. Um, so where's the figures I have here. The grand total, the Hagoromo is the most, uh, was the most uh, popular, presented eight times, no less. Uh, Aoinoe, Dojoji, Funabenke, Kumasaka, Miwa, and Toru performed uh, seven times, and uh, the other plays performed as you see. I had to put words together to make it work, but uh, yeah, so there's a lot of familiar names there for those of us who know, know here. So the Banga Yokoku are these thousands of plays that are no longer in the repertoire, Little Red, uh, as I say. But I thought that before I go on to this, and this could be wasting my valuable time, I'd actually like to talk about the grey area, the area between the plays in the repertoire and the plays that are definitely no longer known or, or performed at all. And that is one thing, is Fukyoku, the revival of old plays. Uh, plays, uh, in this case, for example, Akoya uh, no Matsu, it's written by Zeami, uh, quite clearly, we have a manuscript of it, um, but it doesn't have much performance history uh, until the 20th century. It is in the uh, Iwanami Taike edition, so it's been accessible to follow, to, uh, to scholars with lots and lots of uh, notes and so forth for many years since the, uh, when, when was it, the 1950s, 60s, when that, uh, the Taike came out. But um, it hasn't been performed much. Um, uh, the, it was um, performed first at the National No Theatre that was revived there, April 2012. I missed it. But I was very fortunate to go up to Yamagata, uh, a, a part of Japan that so many of us like, uh, which, uh, where it was performed again. Why, was it, why Yamagata? Because it deals with a pine tree. And the descendant of that pine tree still exists, and you know I have photographs to prove it. They say uh, in a temple uh, nearby there, so this this matsu, this uh, this one, and yes, it was part of a commemoration of Kanami's birth, uh, his son uh, Ziami's uh, 650 years anniversary uh, there, and I was able to buy the, the Taibon. 
uh, doesn't look like the usual typo. The typo on the libretti, the text for, for studying note, for reading note, and it contains musical, for those of you who you know, you know, little musical things, little keys, so you go up here and you go down there and so forth, and, uh, and you return to the, the main pitch. So this is a Kanze style type on, uh, much clearer than the usual ones, but, uh, but in the same sort of uh, style. Um, in November, uh, next month, for those of us living in Japan, uh, there will be, uh, sorry, that's, uh, oh, this is, uh, by the way, this uh, Akoyo no Matsu has been very beautifully translated recently by Royal Tyler, privately printed book, uh, but available through Amazon in a wonderful collection of early plays. So Bungai is studied by, uh, by some uh, great scholars, uh, and particularly plays uh, by, by uh, important playwrights like Seami. Uh, are too good to neglect, but there are others uh, that I'll be coming to. So those of us uh, in, in, uh, in Tokyo in September will be able to see a play called Shigehira. Uh, now this is a warrior play, and an important one, it's also called Kasa Sotoba, and it's a story that appears in uh, the Heike Monogatari, Taira no Shigehira, was uh, held responsible for the burning of the, da the Daibutsu, the great Buddha, in Todaiji, and uh, was, put, was put to death uh, by the, the monks, uh, who were naturally aggrieved at the loss of, of this. And here he is praying to Amida. Uh, and it's a great play, a very, very good play here. It was first reproduced in a reconstructed version by the stay actor, uh, Asami, uh, I'll, I'll learn sooner or later, Asami, uh, that's pronounced Masakuni, apparently, Asami Masakuni, um, who first uh, reconstructed. What does it mean to reconstruct? He needed to get the text, he needed to decide the, the staging, the, the, the music, uh, all sorts of things, uh, all sorts of details. In 1983, and here he is in 2016, performing it just for the second time, or oh, maybe it's the third time, but it's, he's hardly ever done it. Uh, we're fortunate also in the, uh, in, uh, outside of Japan uh, that there has been a fine, very fine translation uh, by Paul Atkins of this, and you notice there are stage directions here, and then footnote two says the stage directions are from Yokomichi no Mote, in other words, the Iwanami Taike edition, but they're conjectural during the, the lack of a modern performance tradition. Well, now there is a, a modern performance tradition, but not one that has been carried down uh, over the ages. That's the problem with these early uh, plays, even if there is uh, music surviving or manuscripts surviving. So, uh, back to these 240 plays. The Kanze repertoire is a little less, 210. And I'm going to skip over a little bit here. There's actually, I'm still confused exactly what are these 210 plays. The Utaibon, the ones that are produced by the publisher, Pinoki Shoten, uh, are 210. Uh, but they're slightly different than the 210s in the two volumes that, uh, that the no teachers always have when they're teaching you how to recite. They always use the bigger books like that if they haven't digitized them. Um, for example, the, this uh, uh, Hyakubanshu in, contains Tai Ten uh, that was uh, uh, written for the uh, celebration for Emperor Taisho um, back in 19, uh, 1915. It's no longer performed, it's a little red, a little bit occasionally can be uh, uh, sung, I guess. Uh, Motomezuka, uh, sorry, that should be, um, uh, is a very important play. Uh, Kanami uh, certainly had some hand in the writing. But it only re-entered the Kanze repertoire in 51, entering the repertoire, in other words, becoming an official play, coming out of the darkness that is the Bungai, and coming into the light that is the, the, the plays that are done. So it's now regularly performed. Um, there's another one, the Utaibon actually has this play, and I remember when I was doing Utai uh, lessons, uh, I heard about it somehow, that there was a new, new one that had suddenly come in, came in uh, at this time, 2000, but there's a manuscript, the Ami's own hand, it was printed, but not performed often. It was this, the only one uh, record of performance revived, and then only in the year 2000 did the uh, Kanze school finally make it official. So this division between what is outside the canon, I, I like this word, it's nice and short, and inside the canon is not always uh, clear, this, there is a gray area. But let's now go to Bangai Kaku. Yeah, that wasn't too bad. So that was the kind of little intro now. So Bangai Kaku, these are two wonderful books from the early 50s, uh, written by, uh, edited by a man called Tanaka uh, Makoto, who went back to the many, many printed, early printed edition, early, in other words, 16th, 17th, uh, 17th, 18th, 19th century editions, and many manuscripts of Bangai Yoko. So when there is a play, it's not just one surviving manuscript, like the one 
Darwin and the Green Knight and the one uh, Beowulf or whatever in, in the English uh, literary tradition here. There are often five, six, seven different manuscripts of these plays, but they are no longer part of the performing canon. They stopped being so often in the Edo period or in the Meiji period when there was a sort of reduction from 500 down to the 250 or 240 today. Um, this is the great one, and my kinkyu he paid for the middle one. Uh, these are too expensive, and these ones I just borrowed the library edition permanently until I retire, until they ask me to take them back. That is, uh, I forget, what is it, 57 volumes, whatever the, the total there, 58, tremendous work of scholarship. Very little annotation, not on the page. He does put the, the, the different uh, readings of different manuscripts in parentheses. There's a short thing in the beginning, mainly about uh, the textual aspects. He doesn't helpfully say this is about you know, what, what the play is about or who the stay is, but that's part of the joy. Many of these plays are only three or four pages long, so I'm a lazy sort of person. You know, the, the, I, I like things that I can, can get into. It's a puzzle. I try to solve what is the play about, who is the stay. And the stay doesn't announce himself immediately, but there's a certain point when we were, ah, that's who it is, and then it goes off and then we... So there's a certain amount of um, uh, excitement trying to work out what these are. And I talk, right at the end, I'll talk a little about tools, because one of my objects in this is to try to encourage people to go outside the canon. 240 is a tremendous amount to learn, to sing, to study. So you think, well, why, why, why read anything else? But I think it teaches us a great deal about the plays that are in the canon. Nobody would just read Shakespeare. If you were an Elizabethan scholar, you wouldn't just read Shakespeare's plays. You would read all the other Elizabethan playwrights, right? It's the same kind of thing, even forgotten plays. And it actually helps you to understand better. Well, that's a sort of concluding remark, which I may not have time to hear. Now, I've done a little bit on this line here. Sorry, I'm going to sort of abandon this a bit. A uh, uh, little bit on this line. Um, the first time I decided to read a large chunk of, of Bungai Yoktoku in, in a sort of mass was when I discovered that there's an early Meiji edition. The text itself was owned by... Uh, that is Sato, and e koko Sato, Ernest Sato, wow. Sato. So he's got his mark, and Aston had it too. Uh, this edition, he passed it on to the editors here, and it's been reprinted. This is, uh, was a wonderful text because it was owned by a daimyo, collected by a daimyo. So at a certain time in the 1650, they tried to collect new plays. Some of them had probably been late 16th century, early 17th century. And of course, I first wanted to look at the Genpei War ones, but I saw that there were many about the Taiheiti. And I kept on hearing, Taiheiti is so important. This, this long, long work describing the, uh, the extremely long war between the northern courts and the southern courts uh, had a great influence in early Japan, but it not much impact to know. There are a few known in the current repertoire from Taiheiti, but it's uh, just a tip of the iceberg. There are many other uh, fascinating uh, ones here. So I, I read them all, and, but I didn't. Uh, so then the other thing is um, at the back of the book that Elizabeth and Order and I uh, edited uh, the translations of No Plays of the Genpei War, I put in a little uh, sort of garden house project that I've been working uh, on for many years, which is trying to list out all the plays connected with the Genpei story. And where do you draw the line? I don't want to talk about that too much today. Well, I include what I call the Yoshitsune cycle. Plays that, uh, there are characters that appear in the Genpei War, but they have more to do with Minamoto no <coughs> Yoshitsune uh, and uh, Shizuka Gozen and other characters. And uh, in this particular page, there were, but there wasn't enough space in a large book to publish them all, so I put it online, and it now has 250 <coughs> plays, and I keep adding uh, new entries and summaries. Uh, so this is what I'm trying to do here, is, uh, is to look at the plays which were written up to the 20th century, so including later Edo plays. But for this conference, I decided to, uh, so here's another example here, uh, with, uh, with, as you see, with more descriptions of the plot, just for the next person and where you can find it and what text you can look for. So the question that I, uh, that I decided to face here was no plays that are not in the repertoire. And the question is, why has the no repertoire focused almost exclusively on one single conflict among so many others in Japanese history? Japan suffered a tremendous year, they use the expression that's used in Chinese, the, the country at war, Sengoku Jidai, the period when, the, uh, when uh, warring uh, lords, warring daimyos fought with each other, 
where are the plays about that? Because often the, the no was flourishing at the time when there were a tremendous number of uh, right? Many of the daimyo, many of the lords themselves were amateurs in no, or like to watch no. Why weren't they writing? Well, they were. They just haven't survived in the repertoire, but they have survived in manuscript and printed edition. So um, um, I found one easy way and, uh, to uh, identify these. Uh, the Japanese uh, categorized no plays, as you know, as in the Govan Date, the god plays, the warrior plays, which is category two, and then the women plays, and then the kind of miscellaneous four, and then the demon, etc. plays. It's five here. And in this, will you see here, in this one here, where you can see, uh, this is my annotated version, this is the original one. In the back of the Shin Taike, as we call it, the Imanabi edition published by Nishino uh, Haruo, he uh, lists uh, what he thinks are the plays from the Muromachi and Edo Shoki. In other words, just the beginning of the 1600s. And it comes to, for me, that was the first time I heard it in a new number, 850. You see, I like numbers. My father was a mathematician. 850 plays, not including the 200, in, you know, the, the ones that are in. So here, for example, uh, Oi is that's another name for Takasago and, uh, uh, and, and, uh, and Aizome and then Aoi no Wei. Those three are in, in bolt type. That is not in that count here. But the ones in between, uh, Aiju and, uh, and, and so forth, and then these funny ones that I put here on this side, uh, Aiza, um, Aka, Akazawa uh, Soga, because they are one of these Soga stories, uh, these two which I'll we'll talk about later. These uh, I've labeled it with, with, with red, and I counted them up in my numerical way, and I found, here we have the numbers here, so here are the 840 plays, the 74 in the, the Shuramono category here, and of course there are these, uh, we, we're excluding here, the Atsumori and so forth, so we have these non-canonical uh, the ones that are no longer performed. And then again, some of them, are, many of them connected to Genpei War, Yoshitsune cycle, but actually less than I thought, about 50-50, actually slightly more for other conflicts. So what conflicts? So moving on, there are wars and ancient wars. There are the Shuramano in the repertoire. There are only 16, right? 15 are about the Genpei War. Uh, warriors, except for Tomoe, who's also a woman, warrior, a female warrior. And then Tamura, which is a warrior of the around uh, 900. But there is a little group of plays, so I just put them in Japanese vertically, and I won't read the titles aloud, uh, Kagetoshi, etc., uh, uh, These are plays uh, about a rebel in North Japan, the Abe family, uh, the Fujiwara fought against them. So it's an interesting place, which I've, uh, I've, I've written a few pages about. And then there's a very interesting period. It's hard to draw the line. When do we say the Genpei, the aftermath of the Genpei War ended? The sort of cleaning up operations, people being put to death and executed. Kagekiyo, for example, it, it's after the Genpei War, but it's clearly Genpei's story here. Well, there were turbulent years. Genpei, by the way, is 80, 1180, 1185, the end of the war, but there was things. But the Hojo, this is in Kamakura, this is the uh, in laws of Yoritomo, if you like. The Hojo family, um, uh, were the, the Bakufu, they were the Shogunate, and they faced a number of rebellions from people who had been allies during the war. Uh, I'm not a historian, but you know, one, 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 one picks up these sort of things as one reads these plays, and there are a number of them. And one of the, it's not really a rebellion, was the Soga brothers' is revenge on their father's killer, but there are other ones like the one. We'll, we'll come to the event here. So there's, that's a group of plays. And then there's this very large group of, well, very large, this, this, this many plays about the Taiheiki. But remember, these are not the only plays, these are just the second category plays, because some fighting plays are also considered fourth category, which I'm not talking about. Many are about loyalists to the southern court, that's the Yoshino court, not the one in Kyoto, and they're largely based on the Taiheiki, but that's something that, that I or somebody needs to really look into, looking at the text, uh, other alternative sources. Uh, and then, this is what really fascinates me, sorry, must be here, localized conflicts. Things that me as someone who reads as a literature person, not as that one, I've heard of Yamana, I've heard of, you know, some of these families down in Kyushu, Otomo, but that's about the limit here. But uh, right? one really learns about these fights, these fights are through local historians and other sources here. So these battles uh, that were important at the time, important for the people involved in them, important for their descendants, uh, are often uh, commemorated in no. Uh, and then, um, just to, to use the expression, Pax Tokugawa, the, the long period of peace in, in Tokugawa, 
um, when there was less fighting, or very little fighting, but uh, they were still thinking about war, they were still samurai, but there was this period uh, from the, let's say, the 50, I'm reading Japanese from, from right to, to left, uh, a period of, uh, of unrule when Hideyoshi, the, the rise of Hideyoshi, other people like Shibata, people who were connected to them, some of these plays actually related to Hideyoshi work, including one of the invasion of Korea, the two actually, two invasions of Korea, I still haven't quite worked out which of the two, 92 or 97, uh, and, but what is rather interesting about this, some of these plays are extremely topical. To, to just four years after the actual event. Or written within 11 days. I mean, this is journalism, right? This is, this is an article. This is blogging. And it, it, it's pretty much like blogging, actually. It's, it's not a particularly a distinguished play. But it's fascinating to read. And, you know, written in Barrett, it's only four, four or five pages. You know, it's fascinating. And so please, if you have graduate students, get them to try to read some of these plays. They work them out here. I mean, there are more in many other subjects. You don't have to be, I mean, I'm not a great war fan. So, uh, how many do you have? Yeah. So, anyway, the, the place, so the, of course there are more in category four, and there are many more written in the Edo play. So, let's have some examples. So, the Revenge of the Soga Brothers, uh, uh, sorry, the Kanji getting moved around with this change I've made here. You know the rough story here. These are the plays in the uh, canon, and I won't talk about this. Most of them talk about the lead up to the Revenge childhood, relationship with the mother who sort of disapproves. The dramatization of the revenge itself comes mainly in one play. But uh, in, for example, Aka Zawa Soga, we saw on that first page there, this Waka traveling uh, monk comes to the foot of Mount Fuji. That was the hunting exhibition, uh, expedition where uh, they finally attack their, their father's killer. Uh, ask the, villi the villager, who of course is, uh, is, is one of the brothers. It's the anniversary, the main itchy of the death. Pray for them. And then you hear the outline of the story. And then we have this Buddhist idea of Shushin, the clinging. Uh, he bears the breaks them to pray. The state is a bit familiar, right? Typical no style here. In part two, the spirit appears. He thanks monks for the prayers. And then part of my title was many, many of these plays have expressions like this. Wakamusha no kachu o taishi mie kamo no wa. Toki mune, the younger brother. Toki mune no yure ka. Are you the, this, the ghost of the younger brother? He said, no, I'm the goes to the older brother. Oh, well, that was close. Good, good yes. Uh, sorry, I should make that. Thanks again. So, you know, it's kind of showing the knowledge here. And then we have these Buddhist words, and one of the things that fascinates me is these words, if you, you know, if you, if you read no plays, if you sing no plays, you've sung that with those words many, many times. These difficult concepts, ire or wrath. Um, you know, uh, and this word, this, this word in modern Japanese, zange, but is, is, it's pronounced sange here, is, is confess or to do penitence for things. These words, these are key words that, that set off the image because these ghosts are going to talk not just about their fighting, the, the how they died, but they're also fighting after death. They're fighting in the shudano, they're fighting in the realm of the asura here. So he tells two stories, how the story of his horse, Bucks, just as he was about to release an arrow to kill his father's killer, he throws from his saddle, misses the chance. Later, he gets the night attack, and uh, so we have this. It stays in the here and now, not the sure enough, but we do have these keywords here. Uh, so speaking up, there's another one uh, similar, but not as good. So let's move on to number three. Uh, the titles, it's a place name. Again, I like the, the second one even more. The first one is good and considered good. It has a record of an early performance. That really is early. So. Interesting character and different. It's not a waki uh, shite, it's a tsure shite type of story, and the story is a woman. It's the lover concubine, uh, the, 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 the lover, let's just say lover, the lover of the, uh, the older brother here. She's come to pray where he died at the foot of Mount Fuji. He was killed after committing, uh, you know, after revenging himself. A huntsman leads him to the grave, of course, the huntsman is the, 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 the man himself. He recalls the promises they once made, and there's an echo, I think, here of Heike, and then disappears. Second part, she hopes to meet him in a dream, Jigiri no Yume. His spirit appears to her, and he uses this expression, uh, Shura no Chimata, and Chimata is all over the place in this place, and much less in the repertoire, and I'm still trying to work out why. But if Chimata in, in modern Japanese can mean town, uh, it can also mean place, uh, and it can be battle place, and so it goes with Shura, which has the meaning of, of the, the, the battle. He, retell, he tells the stories in the revenge, the same as we heard before, uh, and um, it certainly, it's a excellent, well-written play, poetic, and nice and short. Short and sweet. Let's go to a different one. Uh, 1190s, this is the Hojo time, the problem with those, those, those rebels here. 
Uh, but it's a little different one. A warrior called Amakasu goes to advice to the saintly Hoon. Following his teaching, he prays before taking his own life and achieves rebirth in the Western paradise. So this is a story that I actually managed to find on the Jordan Shu website uh, when I was looking. You know this name ha Amakasu, this rather strange name of this person, and I was like, all right. So this is the play. There's a ferryman. The day is a ferryman. Yaba say that sounds familiar. I sort of heard that somewhere before. Uh, it's relatively long, but there are many points of interest. First, the historical context is unusually well to show. There's hand writes. There's, there's, there's lots of talk about the temples. And Amakasa is not an aggressor, nor a defender. He's actually trying to, to, to pacify the people on Mount Hier. And he has guilt at being a warrior, the, the person who carries a bow and arrow. Hornin says, don't worry about that. Go into battle, pray in battle, and it may be your last battle. And you'll be okay. You'll be, you'll be fine if you follow my teaching. Uh, and uh, we have the well-described battle. It uses all of the, the standard conventions of war tales. And at the ending, the spirit, the shte, doesn't disappear in the usual way. He rides on a purple cloud. Shiun ni, uchi natte, nishi no sore ni zo. Not the kind of expression I normally expect here. No, this is a real, he's, he's gone to heaven, right? So this doesn't mean he hasn't been suffering in the eternal fighting and tortures of the actual world. Well, unfortunately, there are eternal uh, contradictions here. He was talking, uh, Hornin promised that he'd be born on a lotus throne, and we certainly had all of that language of Buddhism, of being suffering here, and we had the armor, etc., and then we have the ending. So, we'll stay again. <laughs> okay, one more. This is the, again, that, that, that controversial one, Wada Rebellion here, well known from later pictures, like this one here. Uh, yeah, so let's just skip that here. It's actually famous for the bursting in of the gate. That's Akadina here, for opening the gates, the son of this man, Wada, the, of Wada, Wada's son here. And there are two plays, uh, there is a play about that, it's fourth category. Uh, this play, uh, again, has, uh, it's mainly in color, so it's easy to read, but actually you have to think about what, what are the kanji here. Uh, <laughs> he, he arrives at Yui Beach, uh, part of, as you can see in Kamakura today. Many people died in the Wada battle. So the, 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 the monk already knows about the battle, he's gone. There. And the shte comes, uh, it doesn't reveal his name. This place was the site of a battle. Again, that expression, sure and not That beach is where Wada Nanigashi, doesn't even give him the price. None of is like, you know, so and so, or, you know, what's his name? Uh, Wada, what's his name? Well, he is Wada, what's his name? Uh, it's like saying, I'm Mike, I'm, 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 I'm Watson, what's, what's his name? And here I am, <laughs> return to Itsutsu. Uh, itsutsu is a funny word to talk about return to reality, but it's used a couple of times here. The Waki will spend the night praying, grateful, all that kind of peace and armor. And then we have all of these Buddhist things about being in the world, the, the Shaba and the, the, the Shinni and so forth. This, uh, to, kind of disappointing, but the language is fascinating here. Uh, and then, um, yeah, so again, we have this chimata in the last one. The, the spirit will come no more in this place. Uh, okay, so yeah, so this is this heavy reliance of topoi, these words here, which I'm looking at. Let's jump ahead to the 15th century, right at the end, right at the bottom of Honshu, near Kyushu, Amagaseki. And I found the link here is with a famous poet called Sogi. And um, the, uh, yeah, and there's actually a book about Sogi's travels through the uh, provinces, conveniently on the Wasa website. I won't go into the details, uh, which actually does talk about it here. Uh, this one is, oh, yeah, this is kind of dense, uh, but one thing I wanted to write, this is how I studied, rather than talking about the story itself and stuff, how I studied. I was completely thrown by the expression mukui no tsumi. Mukui means retribution or punishment. Tsumi means sin. But logically, it should be sumi no mukui. There's sin first, and then retribution. Shin's, sin's retribution, or crime's punishment, the punishment of crime. That's what it should be. But then I looked at the repertoire, and we get things like nonomia, we get nani no tomo mukui no tsumi, and the translators presumably thought, well, hey, hang on a moment, that's a bit strange. But they translate it totally normally as if it was backwards. I said to my wife, is that normal Japanese? She said, yeah, 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 chiga, chiga. <laughs> so it must be wrong. But it is, it's all over the place in the, in the one here. And she's like, she's the one here. Uh, there are other aspects here that I'm looking into. Uh, the description of hell is fighting, right, the shurido. It's also, there's a description of the omoki uh, kugen no, no kazu kazumi. Omoki is literally heavy. Uh, the heavy, the heavy agony, kugen is agony, or torture, and yes, they did torture in hell, that was one of them, it wasn't just fire and, and blades, so maybe there is that, I've just tried to be a straffer. 
So what do I do when I come to Crossing Street? I look in a concordance, and there is a wonderful concordance for the uh, ones in the repertoire only, and here we have Kugen, and we have the plays at the bottom, and the, uh, even uh, the page, and even where on the page, you can three poems like this, and you can actually look at, and even, uh, you can get some idea of whether it's similar or not. So that's great, but of course it doesn't help you with all of those plays at the top. Uh, this one, we talked about, uh, the Taiheiki plays I've mentioned already here, the Taiheiki was certainly as influential as the Genji, but it's oddly reduced in the uh, current repertoire. I think there's some political reasons about you know, what is the rightful heir. Um, in the 1920s and 30s, before the Second World War, with nationalism in China, there was interest in loyalty to the emperor, even if it's the wrong emperor, or you know, the, the one that became the wrong emperor. But in anyway, this regards, this needs further project uh, with the people. And one of my projects is certainly to look at the Kusunoki. Uh, that's the, the character there, Kusunoki. Uh, place of which there are many in and out. There's the one sitting in fourth category place. Uh, so let me just yeah, I, I think I think coming coming to an end. There's lots of detail which I've left out here. Tools. So what do we have? Well, we can look at those 58 volumes that I that I showed you, and they're not you know it's clearly printed, not just no no, no explanatory. There is an older Meiji, Meiji edition which has been reprinted. It's fairly easy to get. Um, in libraries, many have it, Kochu, I just call it KYS, Kochu, uh, Yokoku Sosho, and it has a little, little bit of plot summary there. It actually tells you who the Shite is in the Waki, so you know when you're reading. They printed nice big uh, ruby and a certain number of notes, so that's very helpful. It has, as I said, about 500 plays in it, so many of the plays are the interesting bunga. It doesn't say where, what manuscripts were taken from, it doesn't have all of that proper. Uh, uh, information that uh, Tanaka Makoto was. Um, and then there was this extraordinary book which was published, first published in 1990 and then revised and augmented in the 80s by, again, Professor Nishino. And I often bump into him in the no theater and he said, ah, so he's trying to, again, make a new version uh, of this one here. He's always sort of saying, very sort of sweet, 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 sweet man. It's a handbook to more than 1,000 note plays. I did a rough count here. So, of course, all the ones in the repertoire and all of the important early ones here. And he does it by topic. So, if you have students or you yourself, you want to look at revenge plays or you want to look at this, this they get that Chimata character again, Seiwa Kozen, I think it's pronounced, worldly tales or tales about pious children, as I did when I talked to, 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 to in, in Hamburg there. You, uh, the, 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 uh, you can get a group there and a certain amount of plot description and Nishino has added at the top the, where you, the more recent editions. Uh, the ones by Tanaka, which appeared after the war, of course. So it's invaluable and good appendix. So that's one useful thing. And then there's the concordance, uh, of which it's in two volumes, kind of expensive, but it's just, it's just wonderful to be able to use it. But there are also a, a digital edition. So I will end with a little hint for anybody. Anybody does anything serious with Japanese and no. Um, I have links to this on that page I have with the, the no place and the text here. Uh, it's as ugly, almost as ugly as my web. You know, my web skills are very limited, and it's almost as ugly as my web skills here. But as you see, it contains the canon, they say 253, and then the Bungai 51, and also Dance 46. And there's this ugly little part there, where if you click on this or click on this, you get a, di a digital text of all of the canon in one file. Uh, ugly as anything, but you can search it, and you can do what I did. It took me most of the, a lot of the time in the summer. This is a 1800-page 18, 18, um, word file here, but I've done it so if I do a word search, I can actually not only see it here, but I can see which play it is, and it shows what play it is here. So I can quickly search for, for plays uh, in this very handy text, and then of course I can go to look at it in the print edition. So there are <coughs> ways of searching. I'm not going to share with anybody, but you can go to that page. You can go to that page, download it, and do it yourself. It won't take that much time. You'll be able to do the searching anyway. So I do encourage you know do look at this. You know Arthur Whaley, you know all those years ago uh, translated Bungai, like the Pool Sacrifice, wonderful plays. Uh, you know Royal Tyler is translating them now, but there must be a new generation out there, and let's have some fun with these plays. Thank you very much. Is there anyone who has a pressing question that they would like to ask? Yes, Alison. Very simple. Um, you had the last on the last page, I think, forty-six. Yeah. They are the shorter. If you look in the Hyaku Bansho, the the Kansei, for example, Kansei Yoku Kabushu, there are shorter shorter dance pieces. 
And so there are Bungai, things that I know as a Bungai play, and I, there are uh, one portion of them are, is performed as an individual dance. They've taken the Kusei, for example, they've taken one part, and then I think that's what it is. I think, I think I'm, I'm, I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. Really cool, that's right, I, I don't think so, I don't think so. Uh, that's right. So things like Sanekata, you know, there's a Sanekata legend, right? Uh, um, quite a few, or, or the one about, uh, yeah. Uh, so there, there are a number of common plays that have fallen out. Uh, the Ki Kiyomori's uh, son, Shige, Shige, uh, Shigemori. There's a play about him, which is Banga, but one passage is still you know, in the rep in, not in the repertoire as a, as, a, as a performed play, but in the repertoire as a dance, as a dance play or as a, as a song play. I think that's it, but I should take a get there. Okay, does we have anything? Another question? Uh, I think, oh, go ahead. Ines. I, do you know the process by which uh, a, ba a bangai yeah. play becomes uh, moved into the, the current repertoire? Yes, that's an interesting one. And that's something, actually, John, John, you should be <laughs> in interviewing people. That's the kind of thing I'd, I'd be like. It's not my sort of thing, but talking, when talking to Shtekata and so forth, because they, they make the decisions, I believe, you know, that uh, whether they, uh, which ones they choose, why they're choosing it. Uh, but it's sort of multi now, you know, they have these plays by the army, and there's a certain amount of performance history, and it, it revolves a number of people. That's what I can say. Okay, who does it involve? There has to be... Um, the one that I saw, the uh, the two, uh, the uh, the koyonomatsu, uh, the the kyogen, I kyogen part that hadn't survived, so that had to be completely written for the part, the, the inter, in the interlude, which is explaining. Uh, and they got a medievalist, they got uh, Matsuko Shinpei, they got a medievalist to to look things over, and then it was of course the, the top of the Kansei school who, who did. so it involves a number of people, and of course the flute and the, <laughs> the drums, and they all it's a it's a team effort, but somebody obviously has to blow the whistle and yeah. stuff, and I'd like to know, but I didn't, I haven't asked. It's a good question, I'll ask it so much. I, I know for Matsura Sayohime, mm. um, that's the Iemoto who mm. made that, and put that from Bangai when it's such a recent, right. and so I was always thinking, that should still be a Kyoku, mm. but, but he has actually <coughs> made it into regular repertoire, right. and right. so that and stuff. Yeah, I used to tear my hair. Is it a high kyoku? They use these ones that have fallen out yeah. of the repertoire. You know, the raw gyo that, that I, that I was mm -hmm. interested in. That, and, and yet, you know, the, is, is it the, the, key, the key to no. school? You know, the, is it, well, I, I also know that, that from time to time, other schools have made it a regular uh, genko kyoku. And so uh, another school says, you know, we'd like to make that a Genko Kyoko as well too. There was, I forget, so they, the play, there was exactly that sort of thing. It was the Congo yeah, this yeah. time, and then 30 years, 20 years later, 10 years later. Someone else. They, we ought to yeah. have it too, you know, it's a popular yeah, yeah. play, because they yeah. often perform together or see sure. each other's play. So, so there's a certain influence there. Yeah. Gary. Yes, um, I just remembered, I just remembered, um, you had the question about why um, it was only the Genpei plays that uh, were in repertoire. Ah, you, you noticed I never answered my major yeah, question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> was it political reasons and that intrigued me? I think the game, well, one, one thing is I think the game play became the war. It became the, the, the best war to talk about because you could be sympathize, you could sympathize with both sides. It didn't involve difficult problems. It was beautifully told in Heike. The Heike, as we always note out here from, uh, from Allison, uh, the Heike, the story of the uh, Heike had been, was also uh, recited. Uh, there were there were thousands or even more uh, people reciting the stories, also printed. So it was a very familiar story uh, to people. Whereas the individual plays, were, what do you think about? That? But in the Meiji period, I think that Nambokucho, the Kusanoki, right. became extremely important. Extremely important. So there, there are so, these rise and fall. That's right, and that's why. The and there were new plays written about Kusanoki in in the Meiji and then Taisho. That's right, uh, because of, I think it's there because of the loyalists, because of the the the, the emperor worship and. With the, the major restoration, so there's a political, political character once here. Whereas the the, the more the minor con ones were important in in the houses and the, the lords' houses and so on, but it were of little interest to people outside there. But of course, uh, one as far as I as, as I understand, a lot of culture is became local. Uh, people would would have invite uh, traveling uh, performers to play, but they would also you know lords who would do tie or maybe. Perform, so they would want to do it uh, But yes, the Genji, the Genji stayed there. It's, it's Gimpei, well, the Gimpei, Genji Heike War stayed there. So. Maybe I'll just follow up on that, mm -hmm. Michael. Mm -hmm. uh, 
you suggested at the beginning, and I don't know this history myself so much, but at the beginning of the Meiji is when what was probably around 500 plays got cut down to around 240 or 250. So that was the period of time that would you could you assume that decisions were made about some of these issues here? Is well, there a particular reason? I think, and this I'll have to talk to Japanese specialists about this as well, we'll talk to all, all the accumulated knowledge here, but there is uh, there's a publishing history in the Edo period was quite extensive. There were groups of 350 plays in Rocker period had published massive ones, including many plays. And so I think in some ways what the, uh, the Meiji period was doing was simply putting in modern print plays that had already been in printed versions during the Edo period. So it doesn't necessarily reflect that these were, were performed. I think I have to be careful about that. But there were certainly plays that were regarded as worth reading. Some plays with Banga Yokoku, it's quite clear from that it mentions the flute, it mentions costumes, it mentions uh, shika shika, which is the, there's a kyogen part here which goes something like this, something like this, shika shika. So you are, ah, great. So this is clearly not just a written play. This was something that was, was, uh, was you know, we're just looking at a, a simplified version here. Yeah. Uh, the, the other thing which I, I mentioned last night um, to, in the dinner table was uh, the, the usual explanation for why the, the repertoire became small is players groups had to be ready at the drop of a hat or drop of an eboshi to <laughs> perform plays they arrive in the you know, late at night and they say oh I don't want to do I don't want to hear Hagorobo tomorrow I want you to do such and such play you had to be ready so I've often heard this explanation uh, of this but you know if they're ready that they had to be they had to they had to have a relatively small uh, small number of plays that they could play <coughs> very well uh, and therefore, it was in their interest to say, this is our menu. You know, we can do any of these plays, but we can't do all of these other plays. That's one. But where is the textual evidence for that? I'd like to see that. I like a lot of yoku iwareru uh, kind of things in Japan. It's often said. Uh, where's the evidence? I haven't seen the real evidence. Yeah. Well, and then one other question. Maybe this will have to be the final question. I'm not sure. Um, uh, I've always kind of heard, too, that uh, from pre-Edo and then going into Edo since there were so many daimyo involved in that, oftentimes there were people who were kind of, what should I say, sucking up to the, the daimyo and writing things about them. I don't know, uh, the examples you gave don't necessarily s seem to suggest that, but there were a number of plays that really uh, did not last past their creators who performed them a lot, but then the next generation started doing their own plays, right. and so they didn't perform the, the one, the more recent well, you, ones. you get more kudos, you get more to, to writing a new play, to, to play right. rather than have one. But the fact that there were multiple editions and so on shows that there was a certain circulation uh, of plays. Yes. But I know that, you know, to do this really requires a larger group. They're not actually, surprisingly, not many Japanese scholars who are uh, deep, deeply involved in this. I, I did come across another name the other day that I will contact when I get back. Uh, but it's a kind of Kyoto Kenkyu. This is a joint research project. We need historians on this. You need you know, people who deal with texts and so on. I'm not a you know Edo you know Edo history by any means. You know I, I'm I'm simply looking at the text and what I can get from the text. But you know it's quite uh, so. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, if okay, I'm sorry. We do have one more question. question. Um, I'm wondering about this notion of a shinsaku no or a newly made no. Does that notion, and this is pure conjecture on my part, does that stem from this moment? What's well, interesting? Moment when... Interesting. There are people who use word shinsaku no for all of the any any post <laughs> post Morimachi or you know post certainly post, post Meiji. That's right. There, there, there are people who, who, who use it. No, no, even earlier. No, there are, there are people yeah, yeah. who use shinsaku no. Say, why do we need to say banga? You know, they're all new after the the, the, the first phase. You mean people who say that now. In, in Japan? Yeah, there are scholars. There are scholars who use that expression. So uh, I just think it's convenient to say Bangai up to uh, the end of the Edo period and then Shinsaku from Meiji and that is how some scholars use it and when they have lists of the plays they start from the Meiji they don't, they, with Shinsaku. And I'm just wondering when the actual word came into... Ah, yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. Well, I, yeah, I've got a couple of papers, you, you know, you read Japanese, right? I've got a couple of papers, you know, on, on that subject. I'll, I will look at them and I will, I will check them, right? Thank you. Okay, I think we're going to have to stop here. Michael, thank you very much for... Uh...